right. So the shortest resign that I resignation I ever had is um let me let me double check which year it was. Um uh let me see if I can pull it up just to make sure. Okay, it was in yeah, it was 1999. There's a, it was in 1999. Um so there was a game that I played against Evgeny Romanov from Russia. Now, to give you a background, this was 1999. I was 12 I was I think actually no, I was 11 years old. I wasn't actually 12 yet cuz it wasn't in December and um and so I was doing very well in the tournament. I was playing this Russian pl talented junior player, Evgeny Romanov. He is a GM now, by the way. His rating, he did peak around like 2640. Very strong player, very serious, obviously. Um, but I was in contention, and I was studying with my stepfather at the time, and we were trying to figure out what could I play against him that would, uh, that would throw him off. Because he always against E4 would play E5 on move one. Um, so I was trying to figure out, like, when, when I played against Romanov, you know, he would, sorry for the music, he would, he would always play, he would always play E5 on move one. And at the time I was mainly playing the Scotch opening uh, with knight D4, he could play like bishop C5, knight F6, all kinds of different ideas. So I, I was, I wanted to come up with an idea. Um, and I had played the Italian, I think in a previous game in the tournament against a Turkish junior player, which I'd won in a very nice game of the Italian. I didn't really play the Spanish at that time either. So um, what I was trying to figure out is what should I play? So I ended up playing D4 anyway, we traded. He went bishop c5, and I played bishop e3, which is the correct move. Uh, Ludwig played this yesterday, by the way, against Logic, so it's very relevant. Even 20, even 22 years later now, it's completely relevant. So, um, so, so I played bishop e3, not to be, not to be confused with c3, queen f6, knight takes c6, c6, which allows queen takes f2. This, of course, the throbbing checkmate. This was the game in Pog Champs one between uh, XQC and Moist Critical. So, um, so I played bishop e3, Ludwig followed in my steps, uh, and then queen f6 was played by my opponent, Evgeny Romanov. Now, before the game, um, I, was I was trying to come up with something, because as, as we know, c3 is the main line. In fact, we saw it in the games between Ludwig and Logic yesterday, but I decided to play this very strange move, knight takes c6. Now, I don't remember the origins of how I came up with it exactly. I think I just, like, I just randomly was sitting at the board. We were studying on wooden boards back then more than computers, and I thought that after bishop takes pawn, takes black, black, I think the line that I think I looked at was computer said queen takes b2 is winning for black. Now, again, I will turn it on to see what the computer says. The computers nowadays, they're so good that um, I think it'll show that, is it queen d4 or knight d4? I don't remember which one was supposed to be good. But I remember looking at this because the computer right away said queen takes b2 is very strong. Now, again, I don't remember exactly what the preparation was, but I know that we had worked out something that we thought was playable. I don't know if it's queen d4. I don't know if it's knight d4 and bishop c4, what exactly it was. Um... I suspect this is what it was, because already, I mean, maybe d5 is good. There was something along these lines at any rate. Um, and, and it was very complicated. But the computer immediately, when I plugged it in, it spit out queen takes b2. And it was like, black is winning. And then we went deeper into many of the variations, and it said, black is not winning. Um, so anyway, the thing is, but what happens if black takes with a pawn? You've got these very ugly double stacked pawns in the center of the board. They're very isolated and weak. Um, but what ended up happening was I... I, I um, I remember I was saying, well, you just, what about just queen d4? You know, if black trades, you trade, you undouble your pawns, develop your knight, castle your king out of the center of the board. Um, and so this was one of the lines that I thought was reasonable. But one of the main reasons I played this, besides the fact that queen takes b2 didn't work, is that there's very, this very cute line where you go queen d4. And knight e7 is playable for black here. Obviously, um, in this case, with both players having double stacked pawns, it's not really clear cut. Um... But the, but the thing is, black can also go queen g6 to side 7. There's a really beautiful win here with queen g6, knight c3, knight e7, castles. And now in black castles, there's an unbelievable shot, queen to d8 here. And um, and it's a, I guess, actually, now that I looked at it with the computer, the computer says it's not winning by fours. Um, oh, the scene's off a little bit. Sorry. Um, apologies, you guys. I think you can see it, but I'll, I'll change the board. Give me one second. So an anyway... Um, Basically, the thing is, there's knight d5 and black's okay, but what's crazy about this position is if black takes, it's a potential ice skater. You get checkmated, king has no squares to come up to. Um, and if black moves the bishop, for example, to g4, you just take the knight, and after takes, I think you take with a knight or king, you have a knight and a bishop for a rook. Now, long term, this should be winning for the knight and bishop against the one rook. Um, but also, if black then tries to guard the knight, like let's just say queen f6, you can just sack your queen. And after king takes, you go rook d8. And it's a really beautiful checkmate. Again, it's an ice skater. King has no squares to come up, and it's game over, right? So um, this was this was another reason I played it. So anyway, you know, in the game, Romanov, he ends up playing pawn takes knight. I play queen d4. I believe he played bishop to d7, if I'm not mistaken. Let me uh, let, let me see. 
Yeah, I think he played... Did he play Queen G6 or Bishop D7 first? I think he played Queen G6 first. Now, I might have the order wrong. Let, let me uh, let me, let me me see. What did he play? No, he did play Queen G6. Okay. So he played Queen G6. I played Knight to C3. Again, he, he did not want to trade the Queens. Um, and now, as we just pointed out, Knight E7 is a move here. But again, this runs into his castles, castle Queen D8 trick. So in this position, Romanov decided to play Bishop to D7. And now here I castle my king. He castled his king. Big mistake, by the way. And now he now he resigned after queen takes a7. And with that, I won this game in 11 moves. I think this was like the fifth or sixth round of the um, of the World Youth Chess Championship. It was in Oro Pesa Del Mar in 1999. And it's basically just checkmate in two. He just blundered a checkmate in two. There's nothing black and two to do to get out of it. If you move the bishop, I go check. The rook covers the square. King has no escape. And I'm just going to move my queen no matter what you do next move. And um, and so Romanov resigned. I was 11 years old. He, yeah, I think we were both 11 years old. So it's we were both 11 years old. I won in 11 moves. And, um, and it, was, it was pretty amazing. How do you remember full games from that long ago? Well, it was a very short game. So, um, and then he cried. Well, again... I mean, he did, but like, it, we're not here to shame. Obviously, we're both kids. I mean, it's, you're very emotional at that age. Um, but the, you know what's really funny about this game is so the, there was like a playing hall. Maybe I probably can't find pictures on Google, but um, there was a playing hall. And basically, your parents could go. They could accompany, accompany you. Even going into the playing hall, it was held in like this big tent formation. Um, and, and then they, every, all the parents had to go out once the games actually started. Now, this game was very, very fast. I think this game was something like maybe five to 10. It was maybe five to 10 minutes. It was a very, very short game. Um, did I have the Capri Sun and fruit snacks afterwards? Very funny. But but so so the game ended and it was really fast. So I think literally I, I won the game and I, I was out of, out of the playing hall very, very quickly. And I think I caught up with my stepfather before he had even gotten back to the hotel room. Because obviously once the game ends, he would, he would go back to the hotel room and probably like, I think we had some form of basic internet back then. Um, maybe not in the play, not in the room, but there was a, there, you could go to a certain spot and and, um, and watch the games on, on like a computer screen or, or see what was going on. And so I basically got back before before he'd even gotten back to his hotel room. So it was very funny. Um, it was very funny when when I saw him and he's like, wait, what, what's going on? Why are you out, why are you out so fast? Because like five minutes, literally um but yeah so this is the story of the probably the shortest game i ever won in a classical game of chess was this game against evgeny romanov from the world youth chess championship under 12 section uh in 1999 a tournament featuring the best players in the under 12 age category from all over the world and as i said before evgeny very strong player um his fide i think peaked around 2640 he is a grandmaster now a uh, very nice guy but this is probably the shortest game that I have that I ever had. So there, there was this other crazy game, which which I which I will show you. It was it was it was actually very very short too, and it's very similar, you guys. So let's let's go back to start. So there's this other game. Uh, this is not a game of mine, but it was a really short game uh, played between Livio Dieter and Sipiano, who I lost to actually in the FIDE World Cup a couple of years ago, and um, and Vasily Ivanchuk, the uh, very talented Ukrainian player, almost a world champion. So the game went e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, d4. Pawn takes, knight takes. So Scotch opening again. Bishop to c5. And now here, Nisipiano played knight takes c6. Um, he did not play bishop e3 or c3, which are the traditional lines. He plays knight takes c6. Queen f6. Queen to d2. Again, there's a throbbing checkmate threat with queen takes f2. Like, if you move your knight here, you just walk into checkmate. If you try to block with the knight, black just takes, and the queen holds the bishop, and you create the triangle. Um, so Nisipiano goes queen d2 to guard the pawn. So now d takes c6 gets played here. Uh, knight c3 is played. Queen to e7. Pretty normal stuff here. Black wants to develop the knight, castle the king, um, versus, say, putting the knight on e7. So queen e7, bishop to e2. Knight to f6. Castles. Knight takes e4. Knight takes e4. Queen takes e4. Okay, so black is temporarily up a pawn, but there's a little bit of a lack of development. So now rook e1 is played here. Black castles. Bishop to d3 is played. And now here, here Ivanchuk goes queen d5. So again, kind of normal. White's down a pawn, but he has some fast development here. And now he goes b4. The idea being, white wants to go bishop b2, line up the double ops on the diagonal towards the black king here. Um, I'm getting beaten in the arena. It's not a big deal, you guys. Um, so you want to line up. You want to you want to line up the double ops here and um, and attack towards the black king on g8, right? But in this position, Ivanchuk here basically, you know, he is a genius, but at times he's completely insane. And now he goes bishop takes f2. With the idea being that after king takes f2, you have queen d4 check, collecting the rook in the corner. However, after bishop takes f2, 
Um, as you'll see from the bar, Nisipiano very quietly goes queen takes f2, and Ivanchuk resigns. Just a clean blunder, just blunders, blunders a piece, takes a pawn. Now, again, I've heard stories about this game. I don't know if they're true, but I've heard stories that um, this was in a World Cup, by the way. So this was a knockout tournament, too. So this blunder basically was the end of the road for Ivanchuk. It wasn't just like you lose the game, move on to the next game of the event, you keep going. It was a knockout event. Um, so I heard stories that after after Ivanchuk played this blunder, that basically after the game, he went and he banged his head against a wall. Like, I, I literally heard these stories. Now, whether they're true or not, I don't actually know. Um, but this is a story I heard that, that, that after this happened, uh, he did that. So, um, yeah, even someone else said that, too. So... Yeah, so when you guys think that chess is not serious and it's like it's not intense, like, you know, if you bl make blunders, it's very brutal. It's a very, very, very difficult game mentally. Um, so it does happen. You can't blame him, of course. 